Food Detective identifies foods involved in IgG production which may be involved in various conditions such as food intolerance, irritable bowel syndrome, eczema and arthritis. The first thing you have to do is collect a blood sample. Wash your hands in warm water as this helps to soften the skin and encourage blood flow. Select the finger or thumb to be pricked, clean with the wipe provided and allow to dry. Remove the protective cap from the safety lancet. Place the red raised platform end of the safety lancet against the finger or thumb from which you will draw blood. Gently push the lancet against the finger or thumb. A slight prick may be felt as the skin is punctured. Gently massage the finger in the direction of the puncture to obtain a droplet of blood. Touch one end of the glass tube against the drop of blood so that the blood is drawn into it. Take care that the other end of the tube is not covered. Completely fill the tube. If sufficient blood cannot be obtained, then use the spare lancet provided and repeat from step one with a different finger. If you are having trouble taking the blood sample, it may be a good idea to get a friend to help you. When the blood has been collected, remove the cap from the bottle containing solution A and place the glass tube into the liquid. Replace the cap securely and shake gently to disperse the blood fully. Clean the puncture site and use the plaster provided. Conducting the test. Remove the reaction tray from the foil pouch and pour the diluted blood sample into the tray. Gently rock the tray to ensure that all the circles on the tray are covered with sample. If air bubbles are present in any of the circles, tap the tray until they dislodge. Leave for 20 minutes at room temperature, away from direct sunlight. After 20 minutes, empty the tray into the sink. Pour some of solution D into the tray so that the entire surface is flooded. Agitate vigorously for a few seconds to wash, then empty the tray into the sink. Repeat this washing step three more times. Drain the tray thoroughly before proceeding to the next step. Add solution B, the antibody detector solution, to the tray and gently rock to ensure that all the circles of the tray are covered. If air bubbles are present in any of the circles, tap the tray until they dislodge. Leave for 10 minutes at room temperature, away from direct sunlight. After 10 minutes, empty the tray into the sink and then wash the tray three times with solution D. Add solution C, the developer solution, to the reaction tray. Ensure that all the circles of the tray are covered. If air bubbles are present in any of the circles, tap the tray until they dislodge. Leave for exactly two minutes. Blue dots will appear where reactive foods are present. After two minutes, empty the tray into the sink and then gently wash the tray once with solution D. Empty the tray into the sink for the final time to complete the test. Reading the results. Identify the reactive foods immediately after the test is completed. Deep blue spots indicate strong positive reactions and paler spots indicate mild reactions. If there is no colour, then this indicates a negative result. If only a ring of colour is seen, this should be disregarded. Foods are located in positions 1 to 46 on the reaction tray. Identify which positions have produced a blue spot and refer to the test report in the kit instructions to identify the foods responsible. Circle the foods that have produced a blue dot. Please note positions 47 and 48 contain negative and positive quality controls to indicate that the test has been conducted correctly. For the results to be valid, position 47 must be white and position 48 must be blue at the end of the test. If after using the food detective kit and you have tested positive for a number of foods, it is recommended that you seek further dietary advice from a qualified nutritionist.